Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here coming to you from a very rainy Northeast Ohio today, and we are ready to dive back into some more Ultimate General Civil War, the No Infantry Campaign Challenge uh, on the Confederate side, uh, playing on Major General Difficulty and ready to battle and uh, take on the Battle of Stones River. Fought at the very end of 1862 into the beginning of 1863 in western Tennessee near Murfreesboro, and it's looking pretty good, I think, for me in this one. I feel like the odds are in my favor, even though I'm attacking, just because of the great units that I have. Uh, he's going to have about 61,000 men, 232 guns, up against my 37,000 and 199. Honestly, my numbers are fairly similar to what the Confederates actually had at this battle. They were at right around 35,000. Uh, honestly, this was one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War. Uh, and that doesn't even take into consideration that in comparison to the other heavily bloody battles of the Civil War that had way more men than this one did. Uh, you're talking about, uh, between the two armies, somewhere just south of 80,000 people engaged. And you had a around 24,000 casualties. Uh, so, incredibly uh, vicious fighting that took place here uh, at Stones River. So, this is what my fighting's going to look like. Um, I'm going to really load up on the left side because that's my main assault. Uh, the center is mainly, and the center and the right mainly just need to hold. The right really isn't going to be even that involved at first because they're kind of across the river. So, this is the main part of my force. I intentionally didn't build up his army quite my army quite as much as I could, knowing that this is a multi-day battle and I'm going to have the opportunity to kind of refill those ranks. So I held back plenty of money and resources to be able to do that. So mainly I'm just trying to inflict casualties and wear down his army as much as possible so that when he makes that last stand on those hills at the end of this battle, uh, he'll be so weak that I can just pummel him into submission with my artillery, which I have a lot of. I really want to target his artillery and take out as much as I can. My left flank's got all of my cavalry, as well as my long-range rifled guns, so that I can, uh, since I'm going to be constantly moving my artillery, I wanted to be able to fire from long range as much as I can, and uh, those 24-pounders and the howitzers just aren't going to be able to do that, so most of them are in my center and right flank in this fight. So uh, we just got to kind of figure out how we first want to set this up. So uh, you can see there's not a lot happening over here at the center. Uh, that's where I'm probably going to want to put a lot of my artillery because they aren't going to have to move as much. I need this left flank to be as mobile as possible. Uh, so I'll probably do a little bit of switching around with some things. Definitely keep the cavalry down here. They're going to swing all the way around, try to get into this open ground on the outside and catch him as, re as he retreats. Uh, each one of my three corps has a fully stocked 50,000 supplies, so we can keep the, the guns hot and firing as long as possible. So let me go ahead and get this set up, and we'll dive into the battle. Okay, I think I'm ready to go, so let's go ahead and do this, and instantly we see everybody, and I just want to pause real quick and look at the numbers as we currently stand. He's got me better than 2 to 1. He's got me 3 to 1 on artillery. But we're going to even those odds very quickly. And I immediately want to start looking at his artillery and start targeting them as quickly as I can. Uh, we're going to swing this cavalry out as wide as possible. And I've got a ton of it. I've also got these uh, mounted infantry units. And I'm actually going to swing around with them too. And get them dismounted and ready to fight in the rear. I'm just going to kind of hang tight with these thousand man units. I'm going to bring my skirmishers up and start picking at him a little bit. Uh, it looks like I've got to bring the 10-pounders up some more. We're going to go ahead and swing these guys around a little bit. You can see already very quickly causing some nice damage to that battery. Once we get these 10 pounders going, it'll be even better. Let's see what's happening up here. Honestly, I should probably think about shifting up there. Yeah, we're just out of range here. 
So maybe I will go ahead and move forward just so I can start targeting his artillery. So we can get into range there. I'm going to go pretty slow at first just until I get where I want to be with all of this. I gotta keep the thousand man skirmisher units pretty close to these sharpshooters because they need to protect them in the event that he decides to advance out of this position. But I'm hoping he won't. Alright, we're gonna sit tight and just start picking them off. I'm going to shift these guys over even more. Lots of mounted units moving along over here. I just need to keep an eye on my inset map over here just to make sure he doesn't make a move. That's why I'm, I'm staying on the slowest speed setting here because I, I've got to switch back and forth between two areas that I can't really see at the same time. get these guys just to sit tight. They're mainly just there to protect the artillery. Ah, these 10 pounders just don't have the range to get them from here. I really could move the siege guns up, but I think I'm pretty content to keep them where they are. There's another big battery up here. I think I'll start targeting that guy. I'll let these 10-pounders work on this battery here. Alright, I think we're in range now. I'll let these guys fire on the infantry. I'm going to move these siege guns up and I'm going to try and take out that bat. These two batteries are causing some trouble for my 10 pounders. If these guys were in the woods, I'd probably just hammer them with the cavalry right off the bat, but I just have such an advantageous position here. Being able to pick him off without actually having to engage him. Oh, look at you go. That's a problem. I don't know what else might be lurking in these woods right here. So while we're doing this, let's talk a little bit about the historic Battle of Stones River. Um, Union Army of the Cumberland under William Rosecrans. We forget, you know, it, it was such a different war in what was called the Western Theater because uh, we think about... Oh, wait, hold on. Let's uh, let's go after this guy. In the east... You know, for, for the better part of the war, you mostly just had the Union Army of the Potomac, though there were other armies operating. Uh, you kind of just think about that one army. In the West, there were always multiple Union armies that were in the field. You had the Army of the Cumberland, the Army of the Tennessee, the Army of the Ohio. Got a lot of uh, a lot of mounted infantry back there. All right, sharpshooters are well protected so far. 
This battery's been pretty well pummeled. Man, he's got so much mounted infantry. It's really kind of crazy. Okay, Stokes is already kind of being driven off by Sweet's cavalry, so now we're going to go ahead and... Actually, I'm going to pull Jackson out of there. Uh, so the Union Army, uh, about 43,000 men under William Rosecrans. Braxton Bragg commanding the Army of the Tennessee, or Army of Tennessee, I should say. Uh, not the same as the Army of the Tennessee, which was a Union Army. Union armies tended to be named after rivers, Confederate armies uh, by areas, by regions, states. Uh, same with how the Union named battles, for the most part, not always. These guys don't have a lot of range, but what they are doing is they're kind of keeping him occupied. I'm going to go ahead and bring up these guys and start getting into his flank a little bit here. These mounted infantry units are mostly just there to keep him occupied. All right, I'm going to disengage the cavalry for now. I don't want to get sucked too far back. And same here. These guys are going to be pretty ineffective in the woods. Confederates had about 35,000 men, as I mentioned earlier. About 13,000 casualties on the Union side. About 12,000 on the Confederate side. It was probably technically a Union victory, though honestly, uh, tactically, it was pretty much a stalemate. Uh, the Confederates did have a lot of early success in driving the Union back, but then the Union was able to hold at the end of the battle. This was fought just a few weeks after the... Uh, debacle for the Union at Fredericksburg. Right, we gotta move these guys up so they can actually engage. So still two hours to go. Yeah, we're moving pretty slowly right now, but that'll change. We'll start moving faster uh, once a little bit more is happening. I'm just taking my time because I want to get that early edge as far as what I'm doing to him. You can see I've only lost about 300 men. I have lost two guns, probably in this battery right here. Yeah, that's primarily where he's targeting. let him kind of come back to me with this cavalry. And probably go ahead and go up to normal speed now. Now we gotta be careful here, he's shifting. Otis, you're toast, buddy. As long as I can keep you from falling back too far. I'm gonna scoot up a little bit. My gun's quite... can't quite get into the range I want him to. Look at this guy. I may have exposed myself to a problem here. So you can see Sweets is uh West Virginia Cavalry's already inflicted a thousand casualties.
trying to keep in range here with these guns. Let's get them all going after this guy. I want to pause for a second. I just want to kind of evaluate where things stand. I've got all my cavalry going after these guys. I want to try and eliminate that unit if I can. Uh, just Oh, man, we're already low on ammo with my 20-pounders. Uh, the good news is in an hour and a half, we'll open up uh, again here, and we'll get some of our second core, and that'll have an ammo unit, and I can re reinforce these guys with that. So they're just going to have to sit tight without ammo for a little bit because I'm not going to send this guy all the way up there and risk crossing that open ground where I don't have a lot of protection. Uh, we've lost 650 or so men, inflicting about 10 to 1 casualties. We've already taken out 50 of his artillery, and at the same time only losing two of my own. Three thousand men's more than enough to deal with Stokes. I'm going to send the other two north just to protect the rear of my mounted infantry here. We're going to end up driving this guy to the corner, and then hopefully we'll be able Oh, Sweets is actually running into a little trouble here. I certainly can't let this guy end up in my rear, so Jackson's going to have to go after him. Of course, honestly, I want what I want my mounted units to be doing is dealing with his artillery and his cavalry, but it's just not possible the way things are going so far. Oh boy, this is a real problem here. We gotta get enough fire on this guy to drive him off. There he goes. Hello. Okay, let's slow down. Drop these guys back. I 
actually gonna send Sweet's cavalry over here. back a little bit. Oh, we got some legit cavalry here now, melee cav. Looks like he's he's decided to give up the uh, the Franklin Road Woods objective. Now he's down to 85 guns. I've lost four. That's really my main objective right now: is wear him down, neutralize his artillery. Because if I get the big upper hand in artillery, this job becomes a lot easier at the end of the last day of the battle. We actually have him in range right now here. Alright, Jackson, finish him off. Alright, Stokes surrendered. That's good news. Just keep him kind of away from things. I've lost 1,200 men, inflicted uh, 10,000 ish casualties. More importantly, I've neutralized half his artillery. I've got a battery over here. It hasn't really been touched yet. go back to regular speed now. And I love these four inch siege guns. I just wish I could get more of them. Alright, here he comes out. This is a real problem if he is able to break through up here. coming at me with everything he's got too. 
I'm gonna slow this back down again. So this battle's got a long way to go. This is just the first of multiple phases to this fight. Oh, he's doing the same thing down here. Look at this. He's counter-offensive time. If I move up and take this objective, it'll actually move things along a little faster. Gotta watch these these guys are starting to break. Secure, secure the objective. I would imagine in 17 minutes that'll tick to the next phase of this battle. Ah! Now we gotta pull the guns back. drive them back before they take out too many of my men here. Alright, time to pull them out. Before I lose too many. Send these two in. I'm going to hold Law up here just because I know he's probably got some mounted units over here. We're going to take some casualties here, but this is going to be completely disruptive to his center and hopefully cause them to kind of pull back a little bit right here. going to put an end to this battery. Again, they're going to take some casualties. There's a lot of infantry right here. Swiss cavalry out of there. They did their job. They disrupted things. We'll give him a chance to recover now. You can see his whole side collapse now. Now we can start to get up here. Take some more pressure off. We're about to get our second core. All right, on to phase two. Okay, here we go to phase two. We continue the battle over on my left. Uh, we're going to continue to try to hold in the center, but now, of course, we have this new area to worry about, but he doesn't appear to have the manpower to stop me unless he just really 
very quickly unloads and goes after me. So again, we're going to go, uh, go slow until I know what I want to do. Now, if he rushes with everybody, he could certainly try to overrun me, but I feel like otherwise I'm probably in pretty good shape here. I'm going to get these 12-pound howitzers up there. He does appear to be moving forward. I'm going to send this melee cab up here to protect these guns. I'm leaving this area empty up here and that certainly could become a problem as you can see he's trying to move into that. I'm going to go ahead and send some of these skirmishers down there. Kemper was breaking. Looks like he's gonna hold. All right, we got We do need to get supplies to these guys. They're all the guns are all out of ammunition, and I didn't get. Oh boy, there goes those guys. I didn't get my additional supplies yet, so I've just got the one still. Which means I've got to send it all the way around to those guns. Oh, look at him sending Cab in there now. Go ahead, Minty, bring it on. That's what I thought. We've got to be careful here. If I can sneak this sharpshooter unit down in and start getting on his flank, we might be okay. Just out of range here. I'm gonna move these 10 pounder parrots up because I want to start getting at that battery. Look at you. He just drove right into me. There go those guns. That's okay. I've got a ton of batteries and I I can I can afford to lose one. I didn't expect to have my melee cav get routed like that. Let's look at the numbers real quick. So he's down to, he's got 39,600 men. Man, I've lost 18 guns now. I'm not a fan of that. But he's down to just 103. And that's that's really his total. I mean, he, uh, I think he was at something like two something. So he's still got a few that he'll bring into the fight that he hasn't yet. But for the most part, that's most of his artillery. I'm 
a little concerned about what might happen over here. Go get my guns back. What's left of them? gonna mount these guys up he's abandoning he's he's going to his, his fall back now it looks like let's go in and see if we can eliminate a few of these units while he's falling back he shouldn't have too much to be able to turn on them before I can wipe out a few. And remember, my plan is to just bring down his force because I'm going to reinforce mine before the assault on the final objective on January 2nd. I intentionally didn't build my army up as much as I could have knowing I would just reinforce my existing units. So I saved plenty of money and guns for that purpose. back before we get sucked into all of that. Got our guns back. Let's pull that unit back before they get destroyed. I'm honestly pretty content to let him fall back at this point. So I can kind of reset. The problem I have right now is that we're so spread out over such a large area that it kind of hurts me a little bit with him outnumbering me as much as he does. The more I concentrate him in one spot and I can get all of my artillery up nice and close and really do some damage, the better off I'll be. He's down to just 94 guns. So we'll go bet. We'll go ahead back up to the next speed. Looks like he's gonna come back. That would be perfect, actually. I would love that. Oh, jeez! Get out of there! Oh no! The best thing I have going for me here is that we're in the woods, or else he probably would have wiped out that skirmisher unit already. Stay in the woods. Stay in the woods. As soon as he gets me out in the open, I'm done for. Oh. I never thought he'd come at me in the woods like that. And that's a two-star uh, sharpshooter unit, too.
Not this time, dude. Not this time. So we're back to what we had at the beginning, which is uh, trying to target his artillery, using my sharpshooters at range where he can't get back at them. And hopefully he sits here for a little while. Looking at the numbers now. Still all told, I've lost 2,700 men, which is fantastic. Considering I've caused something like 20,000 casualties. Even with a few mistakes that I've made along the way. Come on, Jackson. That's a two-star unit, but we should, should still do decent. Or maybe not. Yikes. They're going to break. They've got 1842s, and they're an ex inexperienced unit. That's not my best option for going up against melee calf. Send some help. That did not go well. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. There we go. I'm going to sit tight with Farrell right there, bring Jackson up, let both of them kind of recover, and then hit Minty with the two of them together. We're going to take out that artillery unit, and then I'm going to be pretty content with that. To win the battle, we've got to take Nashville Pike East and West and lose less than half the army, or take one of them and inflict 5% more casualties on the enemy, which isn't going to be a problem at all. So honestly, I don't even need to take... Oh, that's for a draw. We've got to take both to get a win. All right, so all of this is meaningless. It's all about taking that objective at the end, which he'll be heavily fortified on, so it's all going to be about my artillery and my long range being able to make the difference up. So there's nothing to be gained by really pressing this and, and getting too crazy here, except to inflict casualties to where he has less men to defend those fortifications with. All right, Minty, come on.
bring up the artillery. And we'll make this a two-part series for this battle, so um, once I get to the end of this phase, we'll, I think that's more than enough for one video. I've said this before, but I'll say it again with this no infantry campaign challenge. It's really about slow and steady wins the race, using my advantages in weaponry, marksmanship, uh, to overcome my disadvantage in terms of numbers which causes me to have to be extra patient. And when I don't get patient, it's usually when I end up making a mistake. Um, but it makes for slow going in the early stages of a fight just to set myself up for a big finish at the end, which is going to be the case here as well. We're gonna drive Minty up into the corner. Hopefully he doesn't try to get cute and go over this way at me. Oh, there we go. Hello. We found all of his uh, mounted infantry units, and I'm not sure that I've got enough melee cav here to deal with them. Certainly not effectively. All right, we wiped out Minty. Where does that put him numbers-wise? It puts him down to 35,000. 78 guns, so we're almost even on artillery now. Gonna inch forward a little bit here. Guns moved up. And then we're going to pretty much sit tight, I think. I like that he's staying here instead of continuing to fall back, and a lot of these units are starting to get small enough to where I might be able to wipe them out completely. I want to get at this artillery. There we go. The more his artillery is gone, the easier the last day of the battle gets for me. guys are going to get exhausted from this, but I really need, I want to get my melee cab all back over to where they started.
just expose this artillery to small arms fire. That's exactly what I want. Hour 44 to go, he's down to 34,000 men, just 66 guns now. We're still working on this artillery. bring up some sharpshooters to try and pick them off. Start seeing some units dissolve here. There goes one. I'm gonna give my cav a chance to rest, and then we might just have to charge right into this line. Some of these units are not gonna take much to get rid of. Get my sharpshooters and my guns resupplied. Let's see how we're doing. They're at 47% condition, so we definitely got to give them a chance to recover some. Down to 32,000 men. 70%, still 49. 100, 100. This unit's about to go. He's got that one 1,300 man unit that's going to put a wrench in my plans for charging the cavalry in. Because I was hoping if it weren't for these two units that were that are fairly large, the rest would just melt away as soon as I hit them. Like a lot of the others are doing. Now he's down to 31.5. He might still do enough damage here to where... He's just not going to have all that much on the Nashville Pike. I mean, he's going to get reinforcements. Yeah, let's hit this big, these two big brigades and wear them down before I send the cab in. Well, I could hit him in the rear. Now he's got another big brigade right here too. Several. I think I'm better off just to do what I'm doing. All right, let's pause for a second. All right, let's finish these guys off as best we can.
Old steady 95th rifles. You got plenty of support coming your way. Got him out in the open now. Still got this line up here of melee cat or of uh, mounted infantry. It might be worth trying to go ahead and push in on these guys. It weren't for this these couple of big units. I'm still dissolving more of his units though. He's down to just 29,000 men, 48 guns. That's awesome. Here comes Stanley. If I could hit him first with all this melee cab, maybe maybe we're better off and then we can push through on the rest. I'm gonna do it. It's just too tempting not to. I could drive off everybody on this side, wipe out most of them. Sweets out. He's lost a lot of men, but he's done so much. So you can see his whole line just dissolved. Alright, let's pull him back. That's really what that was about for me, was just dissolving that line, although standing and fighting might have actually caused more casualties. Because they would have kept shooting until they dissolved. all that cavalry before this, the next day's fight. Alright, I think that's going to be it pretty much for the action on this phase. We're going to see where things stand with his army when we get into the fight for Nashville Pike. He'll probably end up around 40,000 again because I'm guessing he's going to get reinforcements. see what we're looking at back in camp well I forgot we actually continue the fight and we can actually push to Nashville Pike now I'm not sure that I want to do that because the benefits for me in waiting and reinforcing my army might just be too great but 
we'll come back with the next phase of this battle and maybe we'll just keep on pushing. So we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below and we'll come back with the conclusion of the Battle of Stones River next time. Thanks a lot for watching.